Okay, Mr. Chair, <clears throat> you are up. I'm up, thank you. Well, good evening to everybody. Uh, this is a regular meeting of the Brockton Planning Board. This is March the 2nd, 2021, and I have 6.02 p.m. And at this time, I have a prepared statement that I would like to read. And the statement goes as follows. I am calling this March the 2nd, 2021 meeting of the Brockton Planning Board to order. My name is Bob Palagi and I'm the chair of the board. This meeting is being recorded. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 20, relating to the 2020 novel coronavirus outbreak emergency, the March the 2nd, 2021 public meeting of the Brockton Planning Board shall be physically closed to the public to avoid group congregation. Real-time participation in comment can be addressed to the uh, planning board uh, utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or question to the chair via the question and answer function. Submitted text comments will be read into the record at the appropriate points in the meeting. For those of you joining us by phone who want to ask a question, press star nine to raise your hand. A copy of the recording and transcript will be posted to the city's webpage within 72 hours. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure count accuracy. At this time, I will conduct a quorum call. Board members, please respond in the affirmative to indicate your attendance at this meeting. Larry Hassan. Here. Tony Gonzalez. Here. Uh, Reggie Thomas has not yet joined the meeting, so he is absent. Uh, Bob Pelagi is here. With three members voting in the affirmative, I declare that we have a quorum. And I'll just briefly read tonight's agenda. All right, administratively, we've got acceptance of the minutes of the meeting of Jan 5, Jan 21, and February the 2nd. Uh, endorsements of AR plans, subdivision plans, and lot releases. It appears as though we have none. We have a return of surety, that's Chilton Woods subdivision, that's Mr. Ferroni. And uh, we've got a reorganization of the board, which I'm going to suggest that we move that until the April meeting. If nobody has, unless anybody has any objections to that. None. All right, wonderful. So the actual agenda items are as follows. We have a street acceptance, uh, Chestnut Street extension. We have a waiver request. Uh, that was part of the subject that we approved last month. Unfortunately, we inadvertently uh, got to uh, discuss and approve the uh, requested uh, waivers. Now, item number three is site plan approval. That's the cow, that's the used cow lot at uh, 863 Belmont Street. That's J.K. Holmgren is the representative. Item four is a return to the zoning board. That's 68 to 70 Field Street, continued to April 6th. Permission return number five is permission return to the zoning board continued to April 6. Number six is a preliminary subdivision that's at Waverly Park Avenue in Brockton, seven lot residential subdivision that has been withdrawn. Preliminary subdivision 76 South Street, two lot residential venture that has been withdrawn. Uh, number eight is a definitive subdivision that's a four lot residential subdivision at Plot 2 Belgravia Avenue that has been continued. And uh, number nine is a definitive subdivision at 53 Cypress Drive and also 300 Rockland Street. That's a four lot residential subdivision, ET Engineering. Number 10 is definitive subdivision property is at 841 Center Street. That's a two lot residential subdivision, ET Engineering. And last is the 11th item, which is a definitive subdivision that's property at 473 Howard Street. That's a two lot residential subdivision and that is ET Engineering. So, uh, without further ado, has everybody had a chance to read Pam's minutes of those meetings, the Jan 5, Jan 21, and Feb 2? Yes. Would someone like to make a motion to approve? Motion to approve the minutes, acceptance of the minutes of January 5th, 21, January 21st, 21, and February 2nd, 21. I'll second that. Okay, so with a motion made and seconded to approve the three sets of Minutes, um, we will take a roll call vote. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes, so we'll move. Okay. 
the first agenda item is, oh no, pardon me, we still have to do the surety. Um, we've got to do the surety. So everybody wrote the DPW and the, the DPW's note that everything is in order at Chilton Woods. So without further ado, is there, well, first of all, is there any discussion on that? Nope. Would someone care to make a motion to, to return the surety for Chilton Woods subdivision? I'll make a motion to return the surety of Chilton Woods subdivision. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to return the surety being withheld on the Chilton Woods subdivision. A roll call vote. Larry Hassan? Yes. Cody Gonzalez? Yes. Rob Pelagi is a yes. Uh, we have a street acceptance. Uh, there's a little sketch in there so you could see where it was. There's Chestnut Drive and there's that little T-shaped at the end there. And that's exactly what this is limited to. And this is a, uh, an acceptance of that, that T, the extension to uh, Chestnut Drive. And again, this is what we call a recommendation. This is, this is a, a favorable recommendation if the board still votes. That's what this is. It's a non-binding favorable rec recommendation. Is there any discussion on the matter? I don't, not on my part. Would someone care to make a motion? Motion to approve street acceptance, Chestnut Drive extension. I'll second that. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the extension of Chestnut Drive. Uh, to, to, I should say to approve, to recommend favorably just the, the acceptance of Chestnut Drive. Uh, vote on the roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Mount Pelagi is a yes. All right. All right. I am. Do we have uh, Mr. Do we have Mr. Uh, uh, Most Reggie. panelist. No, um, Curly and uh, I just put Todd Pilling in. I don't know. I don't see. Oh, there he is. Okay. Todd, you're you're you're, you're uh, muted. Good evening, Todd. Good evening. Bill Self's here Bill, too. Bill Self is on as well. Um, is Bill is Bill, Bill is muted. Hi, Rhea. Hi, Bill. Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, okay. Bill. Would you, would one of you just want to give us just a very brief overview? Because we're aware of the we're <coughs> to address it, but we and we also are aware that you reduced your list of requests for. Um, your, your your waivers, but if you want to give us just a brief overview, Bill, that would be great. Yeah, as we uh, as we uh, have uh, presented to the to the board of appeals, we we had uh, asked for the waivers for the frontage on uh, on all the thirteen lots, uh, and uh, we're these would just be the same. They just itemized mm -hmm. uh, number lot, you know, lot number one, lot number two, three, five, six, nine, as you see on your request. Uh, the first section we had was that the uh, that would be the first waiver. The second waiver that we were requesting was a waiver for the dead end streets. Now, where Cross Ave comes in now and hits up with Augusta Ave, it's the westerly side of Cross from there all the way to the end at the cul de sac. Uh, your limit is 700 feet. Our roadway length is actually 706. Uh, 70605. So we're asking for basically a six foot waiver uh, for roadway length. <clears throat> the other, the other what we we had was we have some some of the drain lines. Uh, in in all actuality, there's five drain lines, and we're asking for a waiver from the four feet of cover required down to uh, you know you know three feet. It's in it's in a range. You'll see each one of them listed. Is uh, is over three feet of cover, and and, and th three of those uh, drain lines that we're asking, uh, Bob, you'll you'll probably see it better. Is it's really just at the catch basin cover. As it goes into the trunk lines, you know, we gain the cover. So it's just it's at three of the basins, and then there's two manholes uh, uh, coming in. Uh, that we have basically 3.8. We're, we're just, you know, within a two or three inches of it. And where, and, where you're, and where you're a little shy, you stepped up the pipe class anyway. Yeah, they're all class five pipes. Yes, they are. Yeah. 
All right. Well, great. Um, thank you very much for that outline. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sorry that we we overlooked that at the we had such a schedule last month. But, Mr. But, Chair. Yes. Um, Deputy Chief Williams also pointed out that there is. Um, we've never had anybody ask this waiver, but um, if we could include section a waiver from section five I, which is the requirement for the fire. Poll box? The requirement for the what? I'm sorry. A fire? The fire alarm poll box. Oh. In in reading your subdivision rules, it's required, but um, I don't see a need for it, and I'd support a waiver for it. All right. Wonderful. All right. So we've got, um, I don't know which of you is going to make the motion, but we've got the item, the basic items that we are looking for relief from uh, the waivers would be frontage, minimum required frontage on all lots. Are you someone making a pencil note here? Yeah. Length of the length of the dead end street. Is it more than one street, Bill? No, it's just on Cross Ave extension, Bob. Okay. It's, it's, it's the, length, the length of Cross Ave extension. The the uh, relief from uh, minimum required cover over certain drain pipes. And the the, uh, the relief from the requirement to install a fire alarm pull box. So who would like to make that motion? That's a lot of reading, but I can I'll, I'll give it a try. Well, you can abbreviate it as long as we, we we're all in understanding. Well, and I and I have a lot of the documentation in front of me too. So um, motion to approve waiver request for definitive subdivisions. Property map 37, plots 4, 6, and 18, Augusta Ave, and plot 36, Prospect Street. Um, so we're looking for a waiver of frontage waivers. Do you want me to read all the lots? No, you don't need to. Just okay, read so frontage. From, you mean inclusive from what lot to what lot? Frontage waivers for lots 1 through lots 15. I think they're all in order. One, two, three, right? so, no, mm -hmm. I might have to read them. Lot 1, lot 2, lot 3, lot 5, lot 6. Lot 9, Lot 10, Lot 11, 12, 13, and 15, because they didn't all go in, you know, succinct order. Okay. Um, and then waiver request for dead-end streets. Length, length of a dead-end street. Length of the dead-end street. So we have 700. Somebody's going to have to help me out on, on, the, uh, on the actual oh. amount, on the waiver. It would be 70605. 700. Okay. So 700. Um, cross section, the drainage cover over pipe. We're looking for seeking waiver on drain lines D5, drain line D5, cover drain manhole, cover basin, drain line D6, cover at drain manhole, drain line D8, cover at basin number six. Drain line D9, yeah, D9 class at basin seven and fire alarm pull box waiver. Does that cover it? That does. Yeah, I'll second that. So there's been a motion made and seconded. Uh, I won't repeat the motion, but we understand it. Uh, vote by roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Reggie, uh, uh, let the record hey, Reggie. Know that the, the board member, Reggie Thomas, is, is now on the meeting. Reggie, did you hear that entire motion? Yes. Okay. No. Would you care to vote? Yes. Okay. So he's, Reggie's voting in the affirmative, and Bob Pelagi is a yes. <laughs> so I think we're all set on that. If I could, Mr. Chairman, I've got one question I ask. As far sure. as the poll box, would you want that? And you show, I, I can include that on the on the plans for final signatures after the appeal period. I have our waivers all listed on our plans. We have the pull box, the fire pull box was added by the by the uh, by the deputy chief. You want? Now, me could to you put it, it on the plan? Yeah, put it on the final plan. Yeah, that'd be great the for, the, for the signatures. That's my only question. Yes, please. Good evening, Attorney McCoskey. Good evening. How are you? I've been listening uh, intently. 
Uh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to do. I, I waved. I waved to Pam, but that's okay. <laughs> would, you, would you like? I'm to trying to be the host, and the, it's not working. <laughs> would you like to make a statement, Counselor? I, I think you look wonderful tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it at that. No, Everything's gone great. I, we appreciate it. Uh, you've got plenty on your agenda, so you don't need to hear from me. All right. Well, thank you. Have a good evening, and, and um, we thank you for your attendance. And I personally want to thank the board uh, for all your assistance. Uh, it's been a long time, but I think we have a good project here going. Yeah, forward. I think you do. It's, it has been a long time. It's, it's been a lot of hard work, a lot of a lot of a lot of appearances, but I think you've got a good project. So good luck with it. We got it right. Thanks to you. Thank you very much. Good, Have evening. good evening. Thank you. Pam. Good night. Thank you. Bye -bye. It. Thank you, Pam. You're right. welcome. <laughs> next, uh, next item is site plan approval of property 863 Belmont Street. Uh, that's a used cow lot. It's J.K. Holmgren, and I see Scott Barrier on the. He's muted though. Now, now he's unmuted. Unmuted. I don't know if you can see me or not, Bob. I can't. No. See you, Scott. It's always yeah. best when we can. We, it's always best when we can see you live. There we go. But there can, you go. Is there anybody else that needs to be moved, or is it just you? Just me. Okay. Then I don't have to look. Well, you have the floor, Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Scott Ferry, Homegrown Engineering, for SNE Sunoco. We were before you folks at your last planning board meeting. I uh, had a few issues that came up uh, that we've since addressed submitted revised plans. Uh, there was three issues. The first one, the entrance off of Belmont Street was not 24 feet. So we eliminated one parking space and made that a 24 foot entrance. Uh, we've added some landscaped areas in the front of the building. Uh, the planning department had some questions about that at the last hearing. So we've added landscaping there. And then we also, I think you might remember Mr. Chairman, there was some questions on the parking uh, the breakdown of the parking, I guess, where the customers, where their employees and where the, the show cars were going to be. So we've broken down the parking uh, into numbers. So we've uh, clearly shown where the uh, employee spaces and customer spaces are. All so right. is, sir. Oh, Very good. Thank you. Uh, do, do any of the members have any comments on the revisions made to the site plan? I think uh, the, uh, the I don't have any, not, I'm sorry. I don't have any. I mean, it looks like they've met all the requirements. Um, it, it looks as though the planning department was uh, responded favorably to the to the uh, changes. So I think um, without. I mean, I looked it over this afternoon. Uh, it, it, looked as though they, it looked as though they've addressed those issues. So would someone like to make a motion? Uh, make well, a motion to. Is this a public hearing? Um, Bob, is. comments? Oh, yeah. Any comments from the public? Yes, it's a public hearing, so. I don't see anybody. I don't see any hands raised. No. Raised. No hand raised going once, twice. I see a Q&A down there. Is that for this? All right. Well, we'll declare that portion of the meeting closed. Would someone care to make a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the site plan approval for 863 Belmont Street. I'll second that motion. Okay, a motion is made and seconded to approve the site plan for uh, 863 Belmont Street as a used car lot. Um, vote by roll call. Um, Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. I.G. Thomas? Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. So I think you're all set, Mr. Ferrier. Thank you, folks. Have a good night. Thank see you. Good Thank you. Um, Mr. Chair and Pam, I see a question from a Michael Gilbert regarding Augusta Ave in the Q&A. Can I see the Q&A? Down bottom. Sorry, Mr. Gilbert, we're um, new at this, so down bottom, you'll see participants, yeah. then question and answer. Bar and the attorney never resolved the plot issues with four and six with mine. Um, I never resolved the what? Plot issues. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. I don't is, understand the question. Is uh, Michael Gilbert, can you raise your hand? All right. He's, I asked him to unmute himself so he can speak. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. yep. Yes, how you doing? I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm kind of surprised that um, I'm sorry about the lateness that nobody knew, but I am on, I'm the only house on this um, project on the street. I actually bought Freddie Heshby's old house. I'm at 100 Augusta Ave. Okay. And um, I have, when I purchased the house, um, I guess he was working on this project, but long story short, I am in plot, f I am in uh, plot five and plot four, I'm looking at the map now, it's approximately 20,000 square feet. So the property line from the purchase of this property in which Heshby was aware, the property line goes through my driveway. And the, proposed, the proposal that the attorney gave me at the point time of my closing was that I was to get a portion of plot six to compensate the cutoff of my driveway. The attorney actually came by my house over the summer. He's seen the discrepancy and totally agreed. So in other words, the property line would go to my garage door just about, and that's a problem. So that is my conflict and issue with it. So there's some trust things, there's some integrity, and um, I it just never got resolved. I've been emailing Bob and the attorney for about four months and I haven't got a reply. You've been emailing what? Which, which attorney? Uh, uh, the attorney that was just on the call, but he's gone. The attorney McCluskey. Yes, he came by my house. Yes. All right. If you, if you, that I, I remember that that was one of the issues that was discussed and I thought resolved. Nope. When we, when we were because the public hearing is now closed, Mr. Gilbert. Okay. So if you were to recontact either attorney McCluskey or the 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 engineering firm that was just on this call. That would okay. be Curly and Hanson. All right. You're going to find them to be very cooperative and they're going to be able to answer your question. And if there's still a discrepancy, I'd be surprised if they didn't address it because they, I'm, I'm, I feel very confident after you, after you bring this to their attention that they will, they will address your issue. Okay. Because the last time I brought it up when we was at West Junior High, and that's the last time I've heard anything as far as in my favor for this. Now you need to reach, you're going to need to reach out to them because the public hearing is closed. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. I'm going to send an email now. I'll try it now. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So we're going to move all the way down to, um, I guess we're going to move all the way down to item number nine. So uh, Mr. Chair, item number eight, we did receive that continuance and that is to May 4th, just in case there's any. All right, if someone wants to make a note of that, we did receive a continuance. I get late today, Pam, right? Yep. It came in like just in the nick of time. I yeah. saw it. Yeah. Okay, so continue to May 4th. Uh, thank you for that. So that moves us to item number nine, 53 <clears throat> Cypress Drive. That would be a, a definitive subject. All right. And I am guessing that the bulk of the people I'm seeing here are on residents in this area. Yep. Azu, is there somebody else with you? Azu? Is he muted? Yeah, he's muted. There's a Timothy that's also raising his hand. Yeah, I'm going to move. Um... I don't know. As... Who's the one with the hand up? I've just unmuted somebody. Good. Pam. Yeah. George Heichel. Oh, okay. So I unmuted you. Um, I don't know. I 
If I'm muted at Zoo, but he doesn't seem to be. No, he's still muted. Well, I've asked him to unmute himself. Let me let me text him telling that. Because he's ready to go. I just mute himself. Uh, good evening, Azu. Bob. Yes. I just told him to unmute himself. Yeah, yeah he's unmuted, did. but he's not speaking. I don't see. Okay, let's try it this way. I'm sending him a text. He needs to turn off his computer and reboot, he said. Okay. Well. Dead silence. George, you want to do some talking while he's? I don't know what he's going to say, so I'm waiting for him. I talked. Hey, Bob, how are you? Well, George, how are you? Good. Cold today, huh? And windy. Very windy and cold. I, I was thinking more of explaining the project. You were thinking more along the lines of the I know. Yeah. Um, that's what Azul's for. Azul will explain all of it. He's better at explaining it than I am. Seasoned veteran. Um, so there are a lot of people on the side there. And if you are here for this in particular, if you could just hand up and that way we'll know when to move you so I'm not Azul is back on he just needs to unmute himself there sorry about sorry about that um, sorry about that um, you'll be getting a, a feedback from my uh, my computer yeah, well, we're getting it now. We're getting it now. He's got two on. That's why. He's got two computers going.
Okay. Are you still getting any feedback? No. Okay. All right. My apologies. So, uh, so I was trying to uh, walk off of my computer so I can share my file, but but I can't get my audio working on my computer, so I have to use my laptop, and, and that is the reason why we're getting the feedback. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yeah. Okay, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, what we have before you is the, uh, the subdivision. Pam, do you have access to the file? Oh, All right, sir. You want to bring it up on the screen? Yes. Um, you can't bring it up, Ezra? Okay. Oh, uh, hold on one second. Uh, share, share screen. Okay. Uh, Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, okay, I've never had to share from this computer, so mm. oh, my word. No, apparently not. Hmm. Pam, I'll try it if you want. Yeah, would you? Um, no, it's not working yet. I don't know why. Uh, I mean, is it possible we can get into a discussion without bringing it up, Azo? Uh, yes, uh, we can. Um, allow. Yes. Uh, so last time that we came before the uh, uh, we came before the board, we had a uh, subdivision that included three new new lots and um, and the two existing houses. We received uh, obviously uh, uh, several comments and so we did go back and then redraw the uh, plan uh, and provided the two new house lots the existing houses and uh, we created a layout that um, we created a layout a oh excellent thank you so much it's so we created a layout, if you can see right here, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, um, lot number two it will house the existing house. Uh, lot number one will house the existing uh, house on Rockland Street. And as you can see, all the lots of, uh, have the requisite frontage. We are not changing the frontage on lot on uh, 300. Rockland Street, that frontage stays the same. Uh, we created a new frontage along the proposed Evolix Wave that we're proposing. All these lots have the requ requisite area for each of those lots. They all have the requisite areas. They all have the requisite frontage. And the only the only waiver that we are requesting at this time, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, will be the radius 
the uh, property line radius at the intersection of Cypress Drive and Evolix Way. Uh, but the pavement would meet the necessary requirements. We will have 34 foot wide roadway. And um, so what we are trying to accomplish tonight, Mr. Chairman and board members, is that waiver for the property line. Whoops, he muted himself. Continue the uh, hearing uh, to your meeting in April so that we can then uh, uh, clean up uh, uh, the plants. Uh, we intend to file with conservation. With this new layout, we are able to stay away from the wetlands and stay 25 feet from the wetlands, which is the uh, policy of the Conservation Commission. And then the other item, Mr. Chairman, that we are concerned with is the, the uh, uh, exorbitant amount of money that was requested for for review of the subdivision. The subdivision has changed. Uh, we believe that you have a functioning, robust uh, DPW engineering division that can that have re historically reviewed the subdivisions. We would have no problem having the outside consultants review for conservation commission with respect to the wetlands and the impact of the subdivision on the wetlands and in terms of drainage we have every confidence that our drainage design will be more than uh, uh, adequate to address the uh, issues uh, so that the only real waiver that we are looking for is the um, intersection radius and um, and if we have to pay that, that type of money for review uh, eighty four hundred dollars I believe it is it's a uh, rather steep for what we're proposing here. So okay. we, would, we would like to uh, ask the board to reconsider that, uh, uh, reconsider that, or at a minimum, maybe you uh, have the board obtain three bids because uh, my client, I, I cannot even advise my client to pay that type of money. When you have a functioning DPW and an engineering division that can look at the subdivision, Okay. Um, Can we? Are you? Are you uh, I don't mean to cut you short, but are we? Uh, are you? Are you finished with your presentation? Yes, Mr. Chairman. All right. Well, thank that's you. That's basically that's the extent of my uh, presentation for now. Thank you for your input. Uh, and I just had some comments. I'll kick it off myself. I've got some. I'll, I'll kick off my my own comments. First of all, as far as the. As far as the, I'm, I'm aware, well aware of what the city has for support people. I will tell you, Azu, that, that while we do have an injury department, a DPW, no, all the uh, departments that you uh, right, what, what is the feedback that we're getting here? Oh, it was Ed's. Okay. So I, I, I'm, aware, I'm aware of all of those departments that you've just recited. We've received to date nothing, okay? We've received to date nothing. So I want to say to you that uh, you, you should in no way take offense that this is, you know, take offense that we're asking you to, to uh, you know, for this project to go out to outside peer review. Uh, it's no, it's no uh, slight against you or your client or this project. But the, the, the actual fact is that while I'm aware of all of those departments that you've just recited, Azu, we don't get anything. The, the quick shot story is that we don't get anything. We don't get anything. So I'd like to see this board, if, I would like to see this board move to do outside peer review for all interior or all, all, all newer interior, not street front subdivisions, but all interior subdivisions because we either get stuff late or we don't get anything. So, I mean, that's, that's my comment on that. As far as the amount goes, um, I know I, I'm not terribly familiar with the city's consultant. I know we have one consultant, but I'm aware also that many communities have two or three consultants and people bid on them. And um, Pam, I don't, can you help us out with that? A lot of communities have two or three consultants and people bid on doing peer review, which I think is a very fair and equitable way to do it. This was a bid. Mr. Chair, and this was a bid. it was a bid and they received the contract to be the house doctor for the planning department. Okay, and then the other, my other comment is, 
So I don't have exact figures for you because I want every every applicant to be treated honestly and fairly. My understanding is that the lion's share of the that eighty four hundred dollars that you've referenced is not for the planning board side of the peer review. It's for the conservation side. Am I saying that accurately, Pam? Yes, it's for the stormwater management and some of the wetlands. And there's a portion in there for reviewing the rules and regs. This combined both reviews into one. Right. So by no means, by no means is that $8,400 reflective of just planning board review. That's that's the grand total for the for doing the stormwater management for and in the issues for the environmental issues and then and then whatever whatever I, I don't I don't know you'd have to check with Pam to see what the breakdown is on the planning board side but it is not I didn't think that it was I didn't think that it was exorbitant or I didn't think that it was uh, excessive but that's I'm not writing the check but to be fair um, you could check with Pam on that. Um, yeah, so, so Mr. Chairman, I just want to I just want to make sure that uh, we have no problem with the uh, with review, and what I my uh, reference to DPW is basically strictly not from our uh, being adverse. We I have no problem with anybody that is qualified to review. That's not the question. My point of making. Uh, reference to the DPW and the engineering division really strictly has to do with the cost of the review. That's it. It has nothing to do with the technical competence of anybody. It, it's just that when we saw the figure that's quoted, re, whether it's reviewing both for planning board and conservation, we just felt that it's it's pretty high number. That's that's all. It's a very high number. You know, when you're paying more to for review than to do the work, it's 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 it, it, it begs you know it, 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 it begs the question. That's all. All right, um, Pam, is there some because the planning board doesn't have any connection, a direct link or connection with peer review? Is it possible that um, that that you could you know certainly after the meeting during regular business hours could reconnect with the with the is the first of all is the applicant allowed to speak to peer review? I would imagine they should be if they're going to if they're if they're if they're, if they're uh, peer review is is reviewing for this applicant. Aren't they allowed to speak with them? They would be yes, but um, at this point they have not been given the go ahead to begin any reviews. No, I, I understand that. I understand where we are in the process. The 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 applicant and his engineer are, are questioning. They're questioning the amount of the the peer review fee. So I can ask them to take another look at their um at their at their figure at their estimate. Their figure. I if there's something you'd like to remove from that figure from that. Um. That seems that seems fair. So uh, let's. I mean, does that seem reasonable to you, Azu? Yeah. No, that's really about what we. Uh, that that's really again the reason for my comment about having an engineering office there. That's all. That, that I, I believe that Risa all, has so. done a lot of the um, legwork for whether or not it meets the rules and regs. I, I think she's spent a lot of time on that. So I mean, that's that's the other comment too. Uh, um, I just want to interject, you know, Azu. It's 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 certainly fair and reasonable for you to to question the outside peer review fee, but just just doing a cursory inspection of this plan, you filed this plan as a definitive subdivision plan, and and I truly mean no disrespect when I say that your your plan is woefully deficient in content. Um, I mean, we can go down the items here, but I don't think that's necessary. You. You have access to planning uh, Brockton, City of Brockton's uh, subdivision rules and regulations, so you can see for yourself what the what the contents of a subdivision plan are, as a definitive subdivision. Plan. So, I mean, and that's again, we're not doing a peer review. We just did a, a cursory review, holding one your plan in one hand and holding the checklist, definitive subdivision uh, checklist in the other hand, and you, you're 
you're deficient in a lot of items. You may or may not be aware of that. I don't know. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, 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 if you may recall, when we came before, what we were looking at was to get a feedback from the planning board, and we had a subdivision that required several variances, uh, waivers, wa several waivers, as well as uh, potential variances from the Board of Appeals. Okay. We received, we received the input, and we said, before we do any detailed work, Mr. Chairman, we are very cognizant of what your rules and regulations say. And so what we did was we eliminated all those waivers and the potential variance requirements. And if you look at the correspondence that we submitted uh, for the, with, this, uh, with this plan layout, the correspondence says we will request a continuation because before we go into detailed design, finishing our drainage, we just want to know if we eliminate all waiver requests with the exception of this waiver for the uh, intersection. That's it. That intersection waiver at the property line, as well as uh, the review fee. That's really in my correspondence that I addressed to the board. Those are the only two items that we wanted to consider. And then we will go um, and then um, clean up and give you a detailed plan based on the fact that we can get the waiver on that intersection. That is the only waiver we will request of this board. And the plan will be all come 100%. All right. Well, all right. The only problem with that with, with that methodology is that typically and historically, the planning board doesn't consider waivers until the subdivision plan is completely approved. I mean, that's typically and historically the way the sub the uh, planning board has has conducted itself. Uh, you might have been maybe probably better off filing this as a preliminary subdivision. Uh, that that then it could have been a an informal discussion tool, but but you filed it as a definitive subdivision. So, so we go forward. My, I, the other concerns I wanna share with you um, is that in addition to telling you that we, we don't consider waivers until the end, end process, just as we did with a, with a previous client on the agenda, um, we don't consider that until the, until the subdivision is completely approved. But, but Mr. Chairman, I, I agree with you, but I also know historically, uh, you, you didn't. You did not uh, uh, give waivers, but I am aware of uh, several projects where at least we gave a feedback. And that's all. We, that's so. Basically, that was that was the basis for that. Okay. That that's it. That okay. was the basis well, for that. Let me share with you a couple of my concerns uh, that I see with your revised plan here. A couple of concerns that I have uh, that I'll share with you, and then I'll open it up to the other board members. But uh, the first thing is that. Your, your two lot, your two buildable lots, lot number three and lot number four? Yes, sir. Okay. So Brockton has in its ordinance what is called a minimum, uh, it's called a lot width ordinance. Some, some communities call it a, a, a building box, but Brockton has, and again, this is not, zoning is not the planning board's purview, but just out of courtesy to you, you might want to check, if you're, if you're trying to do things in logical order, you might want to check sooner than later. And check, with the, and check with the building department to see what they have in, 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 the, in the category of, uh, of what is called a, a minimum lot width. And a minimum lot width, to my understanding, you have to be able to provide an area that's 125 feet wide by 100 feet deep. And it, and it, and it doesn't look like you can attain that in lots three and four. That's just a friendly suggestion to you. That's not, that's not within our purview. So you're going to need, either need to provide that or get relief from it. So that would have you before the Zoning Board of Appeals. The other comment I would make is, Cypress Drive is a, is a completely conforming street in Brockton. It meets current subdivision rules and regulations. So therefore, and I don't wanna get ahead of myself and I certainly don't wanna to mean to speak with the whole entire board. I'm gonna suggest that it's unlikely that this board is gonna start waving start waiving roadway requirements for a proposed new road that's that's coming off of an existing road that meets all conformity that meets all of the, the standards I, I would suggest that you that you are going to have a problem at that at that at the intersection of your road and uh, 
where, where it meets the cycle driveway. You're coming in at 90 degrees there, and you're going to have to provide sidewalks on both sides. You're going to have to provide a, a radius of 30, a 30, a radius of 30 feet at the property line, either by purchasing that from that abutter, or maybe getting a, get, seeking a an easement for roadway purposes. I, I don't see a way around that, sir. But those are those are just my comments, and um, I'd open it up to the rest of the planning board members. Do you have any comments on the matter? I do not. To chair, this is Larry. Yeah. Um, just I'm um, I'm looking at this revised subdivision plan too, and, and maybe Azu could just explain it to me. I'm looking at lot number two which is the existing dwelling, which I, I believe it's on Cypress now. Yeah. Um, you've got lot two and then you have sub lot three. I just, can you clarify what that means? I'm just for my own clarification. Okay, so that was, if you look at the background, that is the background existing lot identification on the assessor's records. Okay. Yeah. So that, but that whole lot, so sub lot three and lot two are the same lot, correct? It's that's uh, focusing where that existing dwelling is. That's not a separate lot. Uh, uh, so, so if you look at the, uh, what we, what we, uh, Mr. Hassan, what we have actually shown in the background gray scale, if you look at bill, just below where it says lot two, mm -hmm. you'll see where it says a former lot line. Okay. So that's why we showed it in, in a background. So you can see what is being modified. Okay. No. But that, but again, I, well, I guess what I was getting to that, that you're not trying to make that another buildable lot, correct? That belongs to the, exist, the existing dwelling on Cypress. I guess that that's is correct. Right. All right. Yeah, that Thank is you. correct. All right. I just mm -hmm. wanted to make sure on that. Um, I, I'm just, you know, looking at some of the, the questions that have come up already is um, you're looking for more information from us because I believe there's some applications that still need to be filed with Zoning Board of Appeals and the conservation too? Uh, not, um, not, uh, not with the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, basically, conservation... We've already laid it out, and we can We meet all the. Uh, we will meet all the conservation requirements. Okay. So basically, I guess um, the reason, if as I noted in my correspondence, the only thing that we wanted to, uh, because we got the feedback from the original layout, we said, okay, let's modify this layout, and then see, indeed, if we need any waivers from the planning board, and the only waiver that we are considering is the radius at intersection, and that's it. Okay. Um, all right, I don't have any other questions right now. Thank you. Any other yes. comments on the part of the planning board members? Let's see, do we have any, we've already taken, uh, this, uh, this being a continued public hearing, we've already taken um, public, comment, uh, Pam, do we do we need to take additional? I mean, well, there's no sense in hearing repeat comments. Um, well, I believe that the mills want to speak and I don't know the wood counselor wants to speak. Yes, I do. All right, good evening, council. If you wanna let the neighbors, the mills speak first, uh, that's fine. All right, um, I'll unmute the dancers. <laughs> Okay. And I don't know, I'm guessing there's nobody else that wants to speak. Everybody else is just... Good afternoon. This is Vance Mills. How are you folks today? Uh, go Can ahead, Vance Mills. You've got the floor. I, I just wanted to reiterate again that, we, you know, we are vehemently opposed to this development. This is not a neighborhood that needs or warrants um, redevelopment. It's a very well-established neighborhood. And as far as me speaking with the residents in that neighborhood, I don't believe anyone else is in favor of this uh, development as well. All I'll right. keep it very brief and that's all I really want to say. 
Thank you, sir. Appreciate your input. Thank you. Go ahead, go ahead, Councilor Cruz. Thank you very much uh, to the board for having me. I'm a little confused though by the engineer who keeps saying the only waiver that he's looking for is the radius. Um, as you, you said, Mr. Pelagi, the only way this street can can exist, I, I'd be mortified and I know this board would be not doing its job if it gave waivers on curbing. And uh, again, I drove on my way home tonight, I drove down Cypress to check on it. When, when that sub, subdivision was put in, we insisted on sidewalks on both sides. It's the, the, the rules of the, of the planning board and in a neighborhood like this to put in what really is just a glorified driveway would be, um, would be a shame. Uh, I look at this and uh, you know, they're just looking for feedback, I guess, but correct me if I'm wrong, I'm looking at the notes from the, uh, from the uh, planning department and uh, the roadway cannot be offset as depicted on the site as proposed. That's a rule of the planning board. Uh, or, I, um, the other thing that amazes me, uh, if, if I'm correct, by creating the street, what you would be creating that uh, existing lot too would become a non-conforming lot, which would then have to go to the zoning board to get a variance to, to exist, which would be impossible to do because you can't create your own hardship. And so you'd be actually looking at the zoning board, possibly having to say, and I know this is not what's gonna happen, that we'd have to take that house out and knock it down just like Rockland just did recently, because you'd be creating a non-conforming lot. I, I don't see how under the rules of the planning board, this street can go in at all. And again, it's not the only waiver that is being looked at. Uh, I also recall that at the first hearing, you told them to file with the Conservation Commission. It's one thing that for them to keep saying that they'll qualify for all the conservation rules. That's for the Conservation Commission to decide uh, at their presentation. There's just way too many, too many uh, shortcomings with this plan. Again, I look at the Evolix way, and as you mentioned, Mr. Spilagi, they would have to talk to those neighbors to get a curb turn there. You know, I can't believe that the fire department would, would uh, I, I know Deputy Chief Williams is on this, would look at that and consider that those radius, or radii, I guess if it's two, isn't it? Those radii would be, would qualify as, as going by the planning board rules. There, there's just, there's so many shortcomings with this that it's just, it amazes me that we, we're gonna keep going on this. And I get the feeling that they just want to keep going until the neighbors aren't paying attention, but we'll be paying attention. And I'd, ask, I'd actually ask you to vote this down um, tonight, if you could. Thank you. Thank you for the work you do. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Uh, anybody else wish to speak from the public, Pam? Um, I don't see no hands raised. with a hand up. No. Okay. Uh, any, the planning board members, do you have any input? N no, it's all been covered. Thank you. Well, I mean, we, what's your pleasure? In fairness to the applicant, we've raised a couple of things here that they obviously they're, what they're trying to do, in my opinion, is they want to take the they want to take the easy steps, not the easy steps, but the simple steps first. So they want to they want to. Vet the vet the project to see what they can do and what they what they what the how the board is going to react. If they if they want to take an op one opportunity, if they my personal feeling is if they want to take one opportunity to inquire about what is called that's going to have quite an impact on this project, uh, minimum lot width. See if they that's one item. See if they can acquire that radius uh, from the I guess it's from the package. Number 69 Cypress Drive, see if they can acquire that because it's highly unlikely that the planning board is going to grant a variance on that. Um, and then the other thing is uh, if Azu or the applicant wants to connect with the um, the peer review folks, we, we should give them, in my, my opinion, I think we should give them one opportunity to do that. Uh, then they'll know firmly where they stand with the project. And I tend to agree with the council too after looking at it that uh, in, in reducing the property that, that creates number 53 Cypress, they're gonna need relief from that because they're making that lot more substandard. So they're gonna leave, need relief on that. So there's, 
couple of things that get, looks like they're going to have to go to the zoning board. Or uh, Mr. Chairman, I have love uh, uh, if I can uh, respond to that. Uh, you don't need, and that's why we're creating a roadway. You don't need to conform to frontage requirement on two roads. You only need to conform to frontage requirement. And the layer that we have here has more than the 175 foot frontage on a volex way for that lot. And it has a requisite square footage. So there will not be any need for a zoning relief on that. And uh, we actually put the templates for the lot width requirement and all those lots meet all the lot, lot width requirements. That, that, that is a fact. So okay. the only the only issue here that uh, uh, we we were trying to obviously we I'm glad we have this that's why we have this meeting to get a sense about the waiver that uh, and that is actually not a variance uh, just for for the benefit of everybody we're not talking variance Mr Chairman we're talking waiver when it comes to the um, with the uh, intersection radar radius on one corner. So, but, but I, at least we getting the information that we needed, um, and um, and I also wanted to discuss the fees. So, if we can, uh, so you got, got input. You've got input on the on the radius. You've been yeah. given some direction on the what I think you need to check on with the billing department for the building the minimum lot width, and uh, we we did discuss the fee issue. So you can you can follow up with that after you know after the meeting. Or yes, starting tomorrow. So we're having, I guess that's as far as we can continue to take this for tonight. Yes. But, uh, Ms. Mr. Chair, yes. it just seems like it's trying to squeeze in these lots into an area that it doesn't fit and the neighbors will be on top of each other, making everyone uncomfortable, it's it's out of compliance. There's just so many issues. It just feels like this needs to be downsized. Is, do, with your expertise, do you have any suggestions on how this might work with, by downsizing it? So maybe you can go back to the drawing board and come back with something that might work because this just doesn't seem like it's ever gonna work. You're asking that question of the applicant? Um, uh I'm not, yeah, gonna, so, I'm not gonna respond. I mean, that's that's up to yeah, you. I, I, I just think you need to go back to the drawing board and downsize this whole project and you know read why it's out of compliance and instead of just coming back with the same plan and, and pushing the same amount of lots and you got the whole neighborhood upset. I mean, just this all I, needs to be taken consideration. I, I appreciate that, uh, Ms. Conkill. The uh, fact is, uh, uh, and I, I want to make certain things clear, the layout of the lots are conforming. Now, if I downsize the subdivision, even if I go down to one lot, that radius will still be an issue because I need, a, I need the frontage. So I, I think it's, uh, uh, in, you know, sometimes it's one of those things, if you, re you repeat something so many times, after a while, it becomes the truth. The fact is, we came the last time and we downsized it from three proposed lots to two proposed lots that are conforming. Those lots are conforming. But I also will agree with you that the intersection radius, that's why we're asking for that waiver. And that's it. If we get that waiver, we will be able to show that every requirement by zoning is met. So I think it, it's important to know that. Even if I went to one lot, even if I went to one lot, I'm still going to need that radius. And if the lots, if the layout of the lots are conforming, then that will be <laughs> the compliance, if you will, or conformance to or with your uh, subdivision regulations. But anyway, we've got the input, and I will have a talk with my client and see what we what we can do to cure that rate intersection radius and want to be able to speak with your consultants and if we if we are not going to move forward then we will surely let the board know as well so all right very good well thank you thank you um, uh, Azu. so mr chair yes if he's asking for a continuance 
Um, I would ask that um, you make sure that they agree to waive the time to that, what is it, May meeting he's looking for? April meeting? Correct. Correct. It will have to be the May meeting. So then I would, uh, we'll have no problem verbally right now uh, requesting a continuation to May and granting a uh, time for the board to act uh, to June. Because if you made a decision, you will need time to record it. So we will ask that uh, the hearing be continued to May. And uh, if we are not going to be ready and if we don't believe that we have anything that we wouldn't waste your time, we will send you a letter either withdrawing or whatever. So I think uh, continuing to May will allow us to answer all our own questions. But I just want to repeat again for the record that a lot layouts conform to the zoning for that neighborhood. The only issue is that radius. In your, in your esteemed opinion, yes. Okay, so would someone like to make a motion to continue? I'll make a motion what, to what is the pleasure of the board. You make a motion as you see fit. We'll, we'll make I'll make a motion to continue this to the May meeting, waiving the time clock issue Pam mentioned for I will send a form as a I'll email you the form so we will need it in writing, but I'll second that motion by Tony. All right, a motion's been made and seconded to continue the definitive subdivision to the uh, May meeting, I believe, I believe it is. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. So we're going to take a, a, a vote on a vote by roll call. Larry Hassan. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Reggie Thomas. Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. Very good. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Next next agenda items are definitive subdivision property for the 21 Center Street. This is a it's a two lot proposed two lot residential subdivision. And again, good evening, Azu. Well, I don't know if it's a good evening, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Thank you though. <laughs> Uh, how, about, how, about say, how about if we say welcome? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Now, the floor is yours, sir. Okay, uh, rise up. May I uh, avail myself of your expertise again? Because uh, somehow I can't seem to get my computer yeah. to cooperate. Yeah, I'm just downloading it so I can screen share. All right, thank you. Ready to go, let's do it. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. Okay, so um, good evening again, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, my name is Azure Toniro, and I'm representing uh, the applicant, Mr. Uh, George uh, Mendes. Uh, basically, uh, we have a proposed, uh, right, so that will be the next sheet. Uh, we have uh, basically an existing house at number 841, right at the corner of Center Street and uh, Fred, Fred Street. And um, on sheet number, thank you. Uh, what we've done here is basically try to maintain something similar to the neighborhood. Now, if you will recall, uh, typically what we did before with uh, a few of the projects that we've done over the last 10, 15 years in the city uh, for similar projects like this one, 
we would have ordinarily gone to the uh, Board of Appeals and demonstrated to the Board of Appeals the reason uh, for the proposed or requested variances. So what we really have before you is a frontage waiver uh, definitive subdivision uh, because we're not, we are shy of the next requisite frontage, but the proposed lots are consistent with the lots in the neighborhood. And uh, we believe the frontages that we are proposing, while they may be short of the required frontage in the neighborhood, if you look at the character of the neighborhood, this is actually uh, in keeping with the neighborhood. And, uh, and uh, we have shown a table of zoning requirements, and we are cognizant of the fact that we need to uh, go to the Board of Appeals for the frontage wave uh, variance. Now, before the planning board, we are talking frontage waiver from a definitive subdivision so that your approval uh, it's not a, will not be a final approval uh, of the project. Uh, it will still have to go to the Board of Appeals. This, the process of doing this has been changed, I guess, for the good, for the best, of, for the better, or for the worse. But from our perspective, uh, the, other, the other way that it was done uh, probably was a, a much more um, consistent and uh, ideal, if you will, way to do it. But... Uh, we have to do it now the way the city pres prescribes that it be done. But uh, we're not creating any roads. And so basically, we've got a list of waivers that normally will be required if you're creating a roadway. We're not going to be creating any roadway. The house that we're proposing will meet all the requisite setbacks uh, required for property line setbacks. So... Um, other than that, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, uh, that's the extent of my uh, presentation. Okay, I'm not sure. We... I'm not sure if Mr. Mendes is is on the meeting or not. I couldn't tell. I don't it's... see him. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, thank you. So this being a public hearing, um, um, do you have any? Do you see? Do you have anybody that's on that's on the call, Pam? Um, there is somebody, but do you want to let the residents speak before? The uh, well, you mean before the planning board? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the planning board. Any comments on the members of the planning board? Mr. Chair, it's Larry. Yeah. Uh, just a question. I mean, I'm just reviewing some of the information from the staff and all that by if that lot were approved, and I guess I should be asking Azu this, um, does it make the two family lot then a non conforming lot? Is, I mean, what, what is the way where we're at, where you're asking for? I'm, I'm confused a little bit. Okay, okay. So on a definitive subdivision, uh, the planning board has to find under 41L that you have adequate frontage. But whereas it's a frontage on an existing way, we're not creating any new roadway. Right. So basically we're asking under the definitive subdivision that you waive the requirement uh, to show uh, frontage. Right, but again, it, it's making that the Center Street property, that lot is gonna be a non-conforming lot. It's already it's already non-conforming. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Sorry. So, and your address is coming in on the single family. The proposed would be on Fred Street, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um. um all, all right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Larry, it's a, it's an R it's an R one C, so it needs in that zoning district. Before he cuts this in half, it needs 30,000 square feet. So he's taking a substandard lot and making two sub more substandard lots. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I, um, I, I think there's some questions, Pam, in the question and answer from people. So I don't know, but I don't think we're done with the I board. Try, I moved two people right. over if they could 
But anyways, thank you for that. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Wazoo. Yep. Thank you, Mark. Katie and Rachel. Katie and Rachel, if you want to unmute yourselves. Hi, can you hear me? This is Katie. Yep. I am wondering, is this a single family or a multifamily house? Which the, the new house, school. the new house. A single family. Okay. I'm concerned about parking. The people who are there in the multifamily house, I, my understanding is it's not actually two families, but they're renting a lot of rooms and they have parking um, off of Center Street, but they also park on Fred Street. So I'm concerned about the parking on Fred Street, which is already mm -hmm. problematic. All right, thank you. Thank you. Do you mind if we ask, um, are you a resident or an abutter? Just curious. Oh, I'm a resident Maybe. on Fred Street. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You're just gonna call me next, say back. Uh, do you have any? Do you have anybody else, Pam? Hi, this is Rachel. Rachel. Can you hear me? Yes, Rachel. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, that was. Uh, I actually live next door to Katie. I'm also a resident on Fred Street, and um, the parking is also a concern of mine because uh, there's actually two multifamily homes on the end. Well, multi residents on the two homes on the end. So every time you turn into Fred, there are cars parked on both sides of the road. So two-way uh, travel is actually nearly impossible at times. So to create another residence down there definitely uh, does concern me a little, especially with the snow removal. And uh, another concern of mine is when is this going to take place because um, my daughter is homeschooled. So the noise could be a problem. And, uh, you know, they did actually uh, change the Brockton school schedule this week and it's more one-on-one -on -one, so she kind of is on all day with the teacher more so now and really needs uh, quiet. Okay thank you. Uh, I'm moving another one. And, uh, Jay Howard. Mm -hmm. I did say that. Jackson. No, course, I can see another thing. Hold on Jay Howard. Jay? Mr. Howard, are you there? He's muted. Hold on. Jay, you're muted. <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying to text him. Hold on. I, I just text uh, Jay and Julie and they're working on it. I think they're trying to get themselves off the mute. <laughs> they should be able to just unmute themselves. Yeah, who else, do you have someone else ready, uh, Pam? No, I think those were the only ones, probably everybody else on must be for the last one. Okay, so there's a message from Mr. Howard. He seconds what everybody else says. He's having a trouble with his audio. Oh, that came from Ricer, I guess. Well, do we know? Okay, so um, okay. If, he, if he wants to come back on, we'll let him come back on. Do we know, I guess, Pam, we did some research in, in the house. The house at eight, number 841 is what, a legal two-family? It is a legal two-family. The Current resident was also the resident who had it changed to a two family. The proponent for this is was the applicant at the zoning board. So it right. is legal two family. Well, I mean, if you want to open it up to planning board comments, uh, I will I'll share this with you and then you then the rest of the board members can share their positive and negative comments. So let's start with the original house. The original house is number 841. It's a, it's a multifamily building. This is an R1C zone. R1C zone requires 30,000 square feet, 175 feet of frontage. I appreciate that the lot was grandfathered, so it doesn't meet that. But you're taking a substandard lot and you're making it more substandard. The other thing that's 
that I find a little unattractive is in order to get 105 feet of frontage for the new this new house, he has to actually go be go go behind or go beyond the range of the existing house. And the other thing that this putting this house in there does is it really reduces any backyard that this multifamily house might enjoy. It reduces any any yard space that they might enjoy. Um, those are my comments out of the gate. But does anybody else on the board have any comments? Um, I made some, you know, I had some questions already, but I mean, one question, and you'll have to excuse me because I'm in my office and the alarm was going off, but it just got shut off. So I was a little distracted. Um, they were talking about parking on the street, but I mean, one thing that I would have to say, if this were approved, I mean, there's going to be a driveway, right, Azu? I mean, so you'd be able to fit two yes, three cars in the driveway. I mean, absolutely. So I just, you know, I, I do have to point that out. Um, just, I, I think some of more of the issues are going to be with the congestion and the configuration of the lots, making them non, well, they already are non-conforming. Yeah, I think the, the thing that bothers me the most is the is the way you have to contort these lot lines to do this. It, it's not a natural division, not by any means. Um, I don't know if I have any other comments. That was pretty much it. I just wanted to point that out, though. Uh, let's see, Reggie or, or Tony, do you have comments? No comments, Larry. Uh... Uh, addressed some of the question that I had regarding the conformity of the lots. Well, what's the pleasure of the board? Would you like to, what would you like to do? Um, I'll motion to approve in hopes that it does not prevail. Uh, Definitive oh, subdivision plan for eight forty one cents. Larry, and just just a point of just a point of reference. If you feel as though you want to make a, if you want to deny that, if you want to make a motion to deny the project, you can make a straightforward motion to deny okay. the project. Well, all right, then motion to deny. The definitive suppose. subdivision eight forty one Center Street. A motion has been made to deny. Is there a second? I'm going to second that motion. Okay, there's been a motion made to deny the subdivision the motion. In a second, made to deny a vote on the roll call. Larry Hassan? No. Uh, let's, be, let's be clear on what we're doing. You made a motion to deny. Right. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry. See, here we go. Yes. <laughs> we're, we're, trying to, we're trying to clean this up now. Okay. So let's redo this. There's been a motion made and seconded to deny the project. Vote on the roll call. Larry Hassan. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Reggie Thomas. Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. So it's, the project is denied. Thank you. Thank you. And I don't mind you correcting me in public, Mr. Chia. <laughs> we'll get this straight. It takes a little bit, Larry. The double negatives are tough. <laughs> Uh, you missed the beginning of the meeting, Reggie. We can vote um, the simple way. Deny. Oh, nice. You guys accept. eliminated. Oh, yeah. Okay, nice. <laughs> there was a clarification that was made by the city solicitor. I just did it to confuse everybody, I guess. I, I, I get, I'm very. Eh, you don't want to hear. No, me no don't, don't, uh, don't apologize. It's okay. You can make a motion. You can make a motion to deny if you, to deny if you wish. Okay. So I the last. It. The. Uh, one more. One more. So we have one more agenda item, and that is uh, definitive subdivision 473 Howard Street. Um, and that is uh, it's a two lot residential subdivision. And again, the applicant is uh, ET Engineering. So uh, once again, I'm going to say good evening, Ms. Mr. Azu. Good evening, Bob. Um, so what we have is similar to um, what we just did. Uh, this one here, uh, if I may borrow of the chairman's uh, phraseology, I think this is a natural subdivision. 
it's a national division and not no contention at least that uh, we can uh, we can uh, assert that uh other than the frontage and the square footage um we meet all the all the setbacks uh plenty of room for parking and uh and this quite naturally fits very well with the all the uh existing lots uh actually if you travel westerly towards Montello Street, you'll find, especially across from uh, J. D. Renzo um, construction company property, all those lots across the street from J. D. Renzo that I bought this land all have uh, less square footage than what we propose here. And as a matter of fact, a couple of them have uh, one has 55 feet of frontage and another one has uh, 60. So uh, uh, what we're proposing is a frontage waiver sub definitive subdivision. I believe, I'm not sure uh, that uh, the owner um, is in, um, I don't know, Pam, if you can tell. Uh, um, barrows? Yes. Is, are they on? Um, there are three barrows. Yeah. Boy, Andy's been there, and I forgot to promote him. Um, there's also a Barbara Hartwell. Uh, is there which one of the barrows wants, or do they want to speak? Um, Nusha and uh, now Milka, do you, do you care to speak? No, they're not responding. Maybe they're muted. I'm not sure. Oh, I know them. Uh, and there's, yeah, there's a Robert Johnson also a winner. I got a hand up. I don't know where it is. Oh, okay, Milka. Okay, I just promoted Milka. Okay. Is she speaking? He raised his hand, so I promoted him so he could speak. Tell him to unmute himself if he's muted. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, sir. Okay, so I'm here. If you guys have any questions, I, that's actually my sister's property. I am going to be the contractor. All right. And we are proposing this because... The lot looks suitable for another house. Yeah. All right, thank you. Pam, what's the, uh, did yeah. we pull the card on, on 473? Do we know, is that a single family? It is a yeah. single family. That's a single. Yeah. Oh, he's having a party. <laughs> right. um, okay. We're not going to party yet. Is there any other comments on the part of the board? Mr. Chair, it's Larry. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I'm looking at the, I mean, the plan, I mean, the visual plan that I'm looking at looks pretty good to me. Just reading some of the notes, the, there was a note made from the staff about the proposed sewer and water line runs through the proposed driveway on lot one. And it, that's not permitted with Brockton zoning ordinance. So I don't know if that something that needs to be addressed it's uh, going to have to be addressed yes i don't i don't i don't quite let me see i i can't really i think i can see it on the plan but i'm just want to make reference to that um i mean the layout of the lots it's, to me i've you know i've, I've driven by it I, I the layout of the plan of the actual lot looks okay to me i'm just looking at some of the notes too. I mean, are we creating non-conforming lots or because it's already an existing non-conforming lot again, but maybe you can educate me again on the R1C zoning. Well, R1C, so they'll be creating, they'll be creating two lots that lack frontage and area because they're in an R1C, I believe. Azu, is this R1C? I'm pretty sure uh, it is. 
Yeah, uh, uh, Arsa, Arsa, could you zoom out? I believe it is, but I, yeah, I think it's wanna, that one. I, we, we do too many plants. Um, okay. And uh, uh, again, uh, uh, Larry, uh, this is, I understand that, but we're also looking at uh, all those uh, ones that I referenced. Um, if you look at the cards, and uh, we are actually doing something that will keep this consistent with what's already in the neighborhood. And obviously the city in its what in its wisdom zoned a lot of these places R one C, but none of those lots can in fact uh, conform to those. So we are uh, we're doing something that is not uh, extraordinary and uh, um, and um, inconsistent with the neighborhood. Uh, one of those things when we go to the zoning is whether in fact what we are proposing will derogate from the uh, zoning and we will say no because it will not have any adverse effect mm -hmm. on the neighborhood. Uh, we meet all the prop, uh, minimum setback is 15 feet on this side. We are proposing 20, more than 25 feet. Um, minimum rear yard is 30 feet. We have, we have 64. Minimum front, set, front setback is 30 feet. We have 46.6. So we have, we have actually better than, I will submit to you, 50% of, uh, uh, of the existing houses with what we're proposing. And uh, the comment related to the sewer, uh, I can, uh, uh, what I try to do is avoid having too many cleanups, but we can uh, actually change the configuration of the driveway because we have the room to do that move the driveway away from the sewer so we can your, do that your driveway is your, your your water and sewer is over the driveway a driveway is over the water and sewer right that's what i'm saying but i can change that well, i can run the water i can run the water straight parallel to the lot the lot line that i'm creating and then come in on the side of the house and the same thing with the sewer i can run the sewer straight straight across by moving the driveway over so that will be, that will be something that can uh, readily be cured. Uh, Sue, so I, I have got a question for you. Um, why why are you holding the new interior lot line fifteen point six feet off the garage? I, I know that is uh, an accessory structure, but I felt that it's uh, if I can show that even for that accessory structure that I'm meeting the setback requirement. I just looked at it as a plus. Okay, I'm just curious. I mean, because you could you could you could split it in half and, and balance the areas, but not a big deal. I just it's I don't I don't necessarily have a problem with it. I was just curious about it. Yes, sir. Well, for me, I, my comments on this is that I think that these the lot configuration is reasonable. I think the lots are they're in the they're in the area that the zoning board. They're in the low end of the area that the zoning board likes to see, but at least they're in that they're in that uh, they're in that area of, of, of reasonableness. You've got you've got off street parking for both buildings. Um, they're actually they're actually uh, as the applicant says they're 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 uh, meeting they're 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 substantially ex exceeding the yard setbacks. So. I mean, those are my those are my comments. Just looking at the project, but um, does does uh, do any other board members have any comments? Yeah, Zoo, this is Reggie. Uh, just on the um, original plans, why didn't you um, move the water and sewer lines originally? Just curious, like away uh, away from the driveway. Oh, because I, uh, there's no there's no rhyme or reason. It's just uh, just no rhyme or reason. I can okay. change that. Yeah, I can change. That. I was, you know, it, <clears throat> because they are fairly deep in that area. I didn't yeah. think that was going to be a problem with the uh, driver. But I, you know, uh, that Reggie to answer your question. There's no yeah. no no reason. I can. Okay, change no, that. I, was, I was just curious. Okay. No, Thank you. No, no reason. I, uh, there's no technical reason why I did it the way I did it. Okay, <laughs> so. you, you can you can move them clear. You can move them on the on the other side, on the southerly side of the driveway. It looks yes. like you could, you could do that easily. 
Yes. So, Azu, just as an FYI, that did come from engineering. So, oh, see, so contrary to Mr. Chairman on the other one, they do make comments after all. <laughs> well, they made a comment on that. They, they made a comment on that one, and it was just the driveway. Yes, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. So, um, your next step would. Let's see, you'd have to go to the zoning board, obviously. No, this is a definitive. Yeah. Well, see, no, he still has to go to the zoning board of appeals. That's correct. Correct, but he, you can vote on this plan and. Is, can... is there any public comment before we vote? I think we, I think we addressed the public comment. Okay. But... All right. I didn't, I didn't, didn't know if we did or not. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's, there, none of them are. Okay. I think they're all related. So, I mean, you could vote on this plan the way it is, and he can take it to zoning. Yeah, we'd need he would just have to put not a buildable lot without ZBA. Yeah, excuse me, there is a news of barrels. I don't believe that he's able to unmute herself. I think she's yeah, the owner, she, she's the owner, she's uh, uh, Mika's the owner. sister. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Pam, but just real quick on procedures. So by non-buildable, the ZBA that allows what the ZBA to comment on this after our approval. Can you just walk me through that? Well, it allows, he, he's going to go before the ZBA to seek relief uh, from building from from creating two lots that don't meet that don't meet the zoning requirements in that zoning district for frontage and area. Correct, but and that doesn't come back to us afterwards, though. Yeah, correct? if you no, because he filed it as a definitive. That's what I. That's what I'm getting. On. Okay. All right. So it would not come back to you. No. All right. And what about conservation? It doesn't be a. That is that is no conservation. He does not need it. On so it's on. It's so it's on here. Oh, that's just a oversight. Hmm. Well, is it? What's the pleasure of the board? If we're if we're, I think we've heard the public input. And um, unless you want, to, unless there's other concerns that you want to share, or uh, what, what's the pleasure of the board? I, I'm I vote motion to approve, but do we have to make a comment about whether he's going to move the driveway or not? Or you we... can make that a condition. Oh, okay, because no. I think we're going to move. So um, motion. To approve definitive subdivision plan 473 Howard Street with a condition that the driveway will be moved. The water sewer lines. Or well, maybe or you move the utilities, you mean. Right. Well, he had mentioned he was going to move the driveway, I believe. Oh, right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, just to solve the problem, however. Right. Uh, Azu? Yes, sir. Were you, uh, if, are you able to move the, the proposed driveway? Is that the better way to go? With That's it? correct. Yeah, that would be the okay. better way to do right. Yeah, I'll move okay. the driveway. So motion to approve the definitive subdivision plan 473 Howard Street with the condition that the driveway will be moved away from the water and sewer line. I'm gonna second that motion. Okay, a motion's been made and seconded to approve the subdivision, definitive subdivision at 473 Howard Street uh, vote on the roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Reggie Thomas? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is yes. So the subdivision is approved. Thank you so uh, much. I appreciate it. Wait a no, yeah. Don't go anywhere. Because yeah. we, no, we need surety and waivers. Yeah. So do you have a form of surety? Or do you want to just no. enter into a covenant? Uh, we want to do a covenant. Very good. So you can check with Pam on that. And then waivers. Well, you're going to need all the standard waivers from a definitive subdivision plan to start. Yes, I, li I listed them all on the plan. I'm sorry? I listed the waivers, Mr. Chairman, on the plan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, you know what, have we reviewed the list of waivers? I'll be honest with you, I haven't. As if 
from now on, could you um, lay this on a separate sheet of paper? Okay. It is, it's just going to be easier because they get lost on the plane. Okay. They're on the they're on the cover sheet, as well. No, sheet number two, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Not layout that you are looking at, yeah. Rasha, do you mind sharing that sheet again, please? Mm -hmm. Okay, if you zoom, if you scroll to the top, yeah, right there. We have some uh, that we are requesting our uh, street and roadway because we're not creating any new roadway. Uh, utilities, again, we're not creating any new roadway. So the utilities will be basically the, uh, to serve the house. Uh, street lighting, we're not creating any new street. When uh, section V, C, uh, curbs and sidewalks, we're not creating any new roads. So basically, the uh, waivers that we are requesting uh, due to the fact that we're not creating any roadway. Okay. Yeah, anything anything having to do with creating a new roadway would be waived. All right. Would someone like to make a motion to approve the waivers as requested for 473 Howard Street? I'll make it approve waivers requested of, of the planning board on 473 Howard Street. A second, please. I'll second that. Okay, motions and made and a second to approve the waivers as requested. A vote on the roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Tony? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. All my uh, all my uh, efforts uh, uh, didn't go totally to zero, so I appreciate I appreciate the uh, point three three <laughs> batting average. <laughs> one for three is not bad, Azu. One for three is not bad. <laughs> no. Thank you so much. Have a good thank night. Thank you and have a good evening. Yes, sir. Thank you. Please, please. All right. So uh, I believe. Do we have any? Uh, is there any other uh, business before the board? Pam, do you have anything else? I do not. No, that's it. Would someone care to make a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. I'll second Tony's motion. Motion's made and seconded. The motion of the meeting is adjourned. Have a good evening to everybody. And thanks for your, thank you very much for your participation. Thank you all. Good night, good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.